is a presentation on the two week wait to suspected cancer referral process, looking at quality improvement. And we've got uh, Robert. Is Robert with us? Right. Excellent. <laughs> Robert, do you want to come? Robert Easton, do you want to come and take the stage and uh, report out? Hello everyone, um, my name is Rob Easton. Uh, the ro my role for the last nine months has been um, Clinical Leadership Fellow in Cancer Services. So basically most of the work I've been doing has been with the cancer teams both here at the hospital and also uh, at the CCG, so in primary care. And before that, and the, basically the reason for my primary care involvement is because before that I was a final year GP trainee, so that's basically my background. And I'd like to tell you a bit more about the quality improvement project I've been leading on this year, which is related to the two-week wait suspected cancer uh, pathway. So just a bit of background to that, so a year ago nearly half of all confirmed cancer diagnoses were originally referred on the two week wait pathway, so it's an incredibly important pathway, probably the most important pathway as a GP that you can refer a patient on for obvious reasons. And it accounted for over 25,000, now actually that's out of date because last night I got some new data through showing that actually that's gone up to over 30,000 referrals now just in, one, in a one year period. Uh, from primary care to here. So it's an awful lot of referrals that are originating from primary care. Uh, now most of these referrals should be sent, well all of them should be sent electronically, uh, but it turns out that quite a lot of it's still being sent by fax amazingly, uh, and also so there is concern, uh, and this is really why I was originally um, what started me off on this project, because I was told about concerns that have been coming in from practices uh, about referrals just going astray, they're being delayed, missed entirely in some cases, and we didn't really know why. So my first job was to try and find out why. And we really, we set out with the original aim of uh, trying to create a standard for the process that reduced the number of delayed referrals, but also increased compliance with referrals guidance. So in order to try and do that, so that in the planning phase, there were certain things we needed to know. So, certain, so first of all, we needed to obviously analyze uh, any variation that may exist in referral processes between different practices. Uh, we also needed to understand whether or not that variation, if indeed it does exist, uh, impacts on patient care. Uh, also to talk to practices, talk to the staff there and try and establish whether they have any concerns regarding the process. And then use the lessons learned from that to try and create a, a leaner, more robust uh, process that's better for patients because they get seen at the right place at the right time. Um, and also that's safer because the referrals get to the place where they should be at the right time as well. So I went around 11 Leeds practices, uh, this is at the start of the year, trying to find out a bit more about the processes that they use. The clinical systems that they use, so that as you may or may not be aware, there are basically two IT systems that uh, we use in GP land. One is called System 1, which I'm sure most of you will have heard of. The other is called EMIS. EMIS on the national stage is actually bigger, but in Leeds, we, most of us use System 1, so about three quarters of practices in Leeds use System 1. Uh, and I use both quantitative and qualitative approaches um, to, to do a bit of research. So going to the quantitative bit, all I did was basically go around practices with, armed with my iPhone and videoed a designated member of staff doing the referral process right from the beginning to sending it into secondary care. So I asked who that would normally be, whether it would be a secretary or a clinician. Most of the time, it won't surprise you maybe, it was a secretary that was doing that. So it would be a secretary that I would film doing the process from beginning to end. Then I just made a process map. Now, out of the 11 practices, every single one did it in a different way. So you would think just accessing a word referral form, filling it in and sending it off, there wouldn't be that much variation. There was a heck of a lot of variation, ranging from zero handovers to five handovers. Uh, so it really was remarkable the amount of variation we found. But from those 11 practices, I did find some commonality. So we did do a process map. And basically, there are three steps. First of all, there's accessing and completing the form, the word referral form. There's sending a task, an electronic task, to a secretary. Um, and there's also sending the form either by email or to using the choosing book method to, to send the referral. So there's a huge range in the number of clicks it took to just access the forms and then send them off. So ranging from 16 to 58, uh, which is a heck of a lot really when you think all you're doing is just accessing a word form and saving it and hitting go. It's remarkable. Um, and then there's a huge amount of variation in the amount of time as well. So two and a half minutes might not seem that much, but this is, remember this is not actually writing the referral letter or cl clicking all the boxes that you need to click. This is just 
accessing the form and saving it and sending it. So in the context of a 10 minute GP consultation, that's pretty rubbish. By far and away, the most important information I got there was just by talking to people. So eight of the 11 practices I went to had had recent delayed referrals due to process failures. And this was by far and away the most common reason for this was because when they sent on a GP or clinician, ANP, whoever was doing the referral, uh, sent a task to a secretary, they would fail to specify the urgency and the due date of that task. So it could be sitting in a, in a secretary's inbox for days, weeks, and in one occasion, <coughs> never, it just got entirely missed. So that is a patient safety issue. Um, also, seven of the practices have recently sent faxes to, um, to the referral and booking service. GPs regard filling in these forms as time consuming and uh, and just overly complicated, so that was one of the main findings as well. And handover issues, as I've already said, were the main problem when it came to uh, introducing a delay into the referral process. So just to illustrate why it's so rubbish and why GPs choose not to do it, but just to send it to a secretary, this is system one. This is a dialogue box that it throws up when you try and access the word referral form. And it asks for loads of information, like a read code, a recipient, but then you have to click on this box down here to search for your template. Your template might be up in the cloud, it might be on your local systems, who knows where the hell it is. But that's what, what you have to do. And it's, this is all completely unnecessary steps. So this information is essentially garbage information, which doesn't add any value to the referral process itself at all. And then if you can be bothered to do all that, you eventually get to the referral form. And the referral form itself is, can be quite complicated to fill in in the short space of time we've got because it's a word referral form. It's digital paper, which we are basically a clog, uh, you know, bolting on to a, what is a, essentially a good IT system, but we're still using digital paper to do this. So with all your de patient demographics there, some practices have got this nailed down and they'll just use mail merge fields to do that. Others, there was one practice where they were manually inputting every single mail merge item for every single referral, which I thought was interesting. Um, and then you've got things like, so urology, for example, you've got the blood results. Now, in order to access the blood results, you might have to go out of the re referral letter, you might have to go into the pathology, and then you might have to go back in again. It can be a real faff to do that. So, what most GPs are deciding to do is not to bother. So they're just firing off a task, and the bit that's the, of the task screen there that's outlined in red is the most important bit, because that's where it shows you the urgency and the due date. And if they're not specified, because you might be busy in a rush, something might happen, your phone might ring, and you just forget to do that, then it can introduce a delay to the process. So what we try to do, armed with this information, is come up with a, a, a new standard for the referral process, which is initially for System 1 users, because they're the majority in leads. So we've got cloud-based forms, which are electronic forms native to System 1, so the clinicians don't actually have to, have to in interact with the word forms at all. Um, they're centrally updated, so if there's a change to the NICE guidelines, guidelines, as there fairly recently has been to the MG12 uh, cancer guidelines, they can be done centrally without practices having to download forms, because you know, often they just don't, and you end up using the old forms for a long time. Um, they're quick and easy to complete, even on the old, oldest, rubbishest machines, which a lot of us have. Uh, the forms remind clinicians if any of the key, the core clinical information is incomplete. That's a really important bit because most forms that are arriving in secondary care at the moment are not complete and that can introduce another delay or it can mean that patients are sent to clinic where they shouldn't be, where they should be going straight to test. So there's lots of reasons why these forms need to be filled in correctly. Uh, crucially, the system that we've developed has automatic uh, specification of the task attribute. So if the clinician does decide they want to send the task for whatever reason, the due date and the urgency are automatically specified by the system. And hopefully what we're finding at the moment is that the new system is acceptable to uh, clinical staff and administrative staff as well. So this is uh, more or less what we've got running at the moment. In, so we piloted it first in one practice in Manor Park practice and now we've got it running in six practices. We're doing a phase rollout with the aim of having this installed in every system one practice by about the end of September time. Um, so this is a template. It's all, everything in, in, on, that you can see on here is based in the cloud. So no forms are based on, on in local machines. Uh, you've got all your specialties, your tibet weight specialties there. So all the clinician has to do is click on the appropriate button. So that's for your, so if we say urology as an example, and then they get an electronic questionnaire. Now this is built into system one, so we haven't had to create any new software there. All we've done is we've created a questionnaire which mimics the questions on the two week weight referral form. Um, so all you do is you click your radio buttons. Now the advantage of this approach is that you can't save the questionnaire without actually putting all the information 
that the word referral forms requires. So it makes it impossible. A bit like when you fill in a, a form to, to book an airline ticket, you can't do it incorrectly. The system won't allow you to do it. So this allows us to basically use that approach. If they want to put in a referral letter, they can, although actually, you know what, the commissioners here are not that bothered about a referral letter. They're much more interested in the actual radio buttons. That's what they're telling me anyway in the cancer team. Um, so hopefully this will, will make sure that that is done right every single time. So then, having done that, and that can take seconds if you know the answers to the questions, uh, you, you go back to your template and you can either send a task to the secretary to complete the process, you can print a leaflet, because we know that clinicians weren't printing leaflets before because they were the third page of the referral letter, so they have to load it up and, the, and then chop it off somehow and it's all really stupidly difficult. And we've tried to make that a lot easier. Um, so if they choose to send a task to the secretary, then what the secretary will then do, or the clinician can do that, that's what I'm encouraging all people to do, because then you've got zero handovers, which is the ideal approach, is just simply click on the appropriate button for your specialties. So if you want to send an email to the referral and booking service, you'd click this button here, or if you want to send a, a choose and book referral, you click that button there. And essentially they both do the same thing, they both just automatically generate the final word referral form, filling in, using the answers that the clinician has put into the questionnaire. So it sucks up those answers and then spits them out into the uh, referral form. And that's an example of a completed urology referral form. So rather than the tick in the blue box questions, you've got a yes or a no. That's essentially the only difference. The formatting, everything else is exactly the same. Uh, it automatically sucks up the blood results using read codes from the system. So there's no need for clinicians to actually look at the blood results at all because they'll, already, they'll automatically be sucked up. Uh, and it basically all answers all the questions that are necessary on the form. So that's an example, so that's the pilot practice, so the baseline period of 15 weeks before the red line, which is when we introduce the new system, is, is how many forms were completed correctly. And so 44% is not fantastic for the baseline period, but that's broadly representative of every practice in Leeds. So when RBS, Referral and Booking Service, did a similar audit, they used slightly different criteria, more generous than I did, but they still only got to 50%, so that's for every practice in Leeds. And that's for, I think that was about over a thousand referrals, so it's pretty a good sample. Uh, after introduction of the new system, we only had one referral that was not completed correctly, and that's because the clinician had clicked the wrong button. And the secretary had got so used to the referrals being completed correctly every time that they simply didn't bother looking at it. So we introduced a second PDSA cycle, we introduced uh, some new. Um, some new warnings to, so that uh, uh, doctors wouldn't do that in the future and there's never been an example of that happening since so hopefully we've uh, mitigated against that. If you look at the blue box actions, and this is quite important because this is what representative of what the doctor is actually doing in the consultation. So are they actually talking to people about the fact that this is a suspected cancer referral? Because often what uh, clinicians here were telling me is that people would be arriving at clinic and, and the C word will be mentioned and then say, what? I, don't, I was never told it could be cancer. And so it's a complete shock to them when they come here. So what are we actually doing in primary care then? So this is, we can get a good measure of this from the new system as to whether there's been any improvement. Are they giving a leaflet to patients when, they, when they're in the appointment? Uh, and are they checking their 14 day avail availability? Because you would be amazed by the number of people I have seen personally who when you want to s send them on a two week pathway, they say, well, hang on, I've got to go to Mallorca next week. And regardless of the seriousness of the appointment, I'm not going to be referred until I get back. So it's actually very important for this to be recorded correctly. Um, so this is what happened after introduction of the system. Leaflets were hardly ever given before, but now we're doing better. We're still not up to where I'd like to be, which is all the time, but we're still doing a heck of a lot better than before. But crucially, the discussions with the patients are being had uh, a lot more, at least on paper they are anyway. So it's, it's difficult to say, you know, it may be that they were having had more before the system, but it just wasn't recorded. But regardless, this, this is what is, you know, recorded, which, you know, if it's not recorded, it didn't happen, did it? So that's what's being recorded. So in terms of the future, uh, we're doing a rollout at the moment. So the initial plan was to roll out to six practices in the phase rollout, so we're now up to seven. <coughs> Um, and with a plan to blanket roll out later on in the, in the year. So I'm hoping about September time, because I, I go back into clinical practice in October, I'm hoping by then we can have a blanket roll out to all system one practices in Leeds. Um, this will be endorsed by the CCG and also Leeds Integrated Cancer Services here as the preferred method for doing a two-week wait referral. 
Uh, I'm trying to engage with Emus as much as I can at the moment to, to get this approach ported across to the Emus platform. Uh, because really, if we, can, if we can do this, you know, at a local level, I don't see why, there's no reason why it couldn't be scaled up and potentially be a, a regional or even national uh, process, because looking at the processes that are used in other cities like London, for example, they're remarkably similar to what we had been using uh, prior to, to doing it this way. Um, so that's that. Oh, and for, for anybody who's interested in uh, the, the, the geeks in here, we're interested in the time. <laughs> Because uh, I'm, I'm a bit geeky. So in terms of the time to, to, do, a, to do the loading up the form, save it, and then send it, so that the average was 96 seconds before, and we got down that, that down to 32 seconds now. And that can be equated in a year to over 500 hours of clinical time. So even a minute is, is, is a lot in terms of you know, the amount of time we can still spend with patients, especially in the context of the primary care consultation. So that's it. Great. Thank you. Thank you.